Hello and welcome to the Car Clinic Podcast with Glenn Power from Sandance Tires and myself, James Pikeaway. The Car Clinic was recorded at the Rove Hotel in Healthcare City, Dubai. In this episode, we talked about rubber, tires, wiper blades, and much more. We even managed to work in Batman. There is never a dull moment in the Car Clinic, so let's get to it. Car Clinic's what you're listening to. I'm James Pikeway. You are? Uh, it could be anything you want today. <laughs> Glenn Power? Yeah, Glenn Power. That's me. Glenn, that car guy? Yeah. Sandance Tires? Yep. Yeah, there yeah. we go. It's, yeah. it's that simple. And, and every week at this time, or abouts, we hook up at the Rove Hotel Healthcare yep. City. We sit down, throw a few microphones in front of each other. One in front of you, one in front of me. <laughs> We're actually trying, We're trying, trying to do something with some YouTube video. We'll get there. It, it is not working. <laughs> well, we need Andrew to sort that out. Don't we? Yeah, we yeah. Need to take guys so that. we're we're gonna get there. But yeah. we do. The, the beauty of this podcast, no matter how you're listening to it, whether you're listening in iTunes, whether you're listening through Podbucket mm. or any other method of delivery, which it also could be YouTube because we put the audio up yeah. there. The fact is, welcome to the program. <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah, we'll try not to bore you. <laughs> we'll, we'll try not to go off on weird tangents. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully there's not too many in jokes. <laughs> We're just sat here laughing about something. And people, just, what, people, what are, yeah, people guys? are already going. What, okay, this is yeah. this is already over for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not interested. I'm yeah. I'm making my way from from Dubai to Ras Al Kema, and it's just two guys laughing. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Oh. Well, I want to talk rubber. <laughs> I, Amy, I, I Amy did, if you're listening, I, it's, and, and it's and and I, it's not the fact that I have an obsession with the Batman rubber suit that gives you abs. Nothing wrong with an obsession with that. I, I mean, I, if it's you wearing it, yeah, that's fine. You know, there's also the Catwoman suit that Michelle Pfeiffer wore. I, I you know, but she could wear anything. It wouldn't yeah. matter. You know, she could be wearing a green garbage bag, yeah. and you know, it would look awesome on her. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. not so much us. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I, I did want to, uh, you know, kick right off talking about some of these different rubber products that we're getting for our vehicles. Yep. And since you are with Sandance Tires, yep. I thought, wouldn't it be good to just have a bit of that conversation about tires? And, you know, there's, there's, so there's a whole bunch of issues with that. Windshield wipers. Yes. Now, you and I are talking from the Middle East, from the United Arab Emirates. Yep. And someone might say, it doesn't rain, although we're getting into the rainy season. Oh, everybody's got gazebo repairs to do, haven't they? After yeah. The other day now. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> And and someone might say, well, you don't really need windshield wipers, but there is quite a bit of dust, and you do end up cleaning stuff off the windscreen, and these darn wipers can can deteriorate pretty quick, yep. and you, you got a lot of choice on the market, whether it be aftermarket products from the agencies, you know, whiz bang, all sorts of cool stuff, yep. and and they they're at all different price points. So I thought we'd talk about that as well. And I, I figured we, then we got a few questions that have come up, so we, we'll talk about those also, and, and away we go. And that, and that basically is the Car Clinic podcast. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. See how far we get through that list. <laughs> might, not get, <laughs> might not get past wipers. Well, yeah, here's the first one. Okay, in case we don't get past the wipers, mm. here's the first one. And since you are a father of two children who ride in a car... Yeah, hence okay. the uh, coffee. Next yeah, I, I see that. And that, that's kind of odd because I've got the, the vegetable never, juice going. You'd, I never have coffee. I know. I thought that was kind of odd. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you'd be a tea guy. Oh, yeah, I am an t- iced tea bottle. Yeah. How's that coffee, by the way? It's from the Rove. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's yeah. cool. Yeah, Healthcare City, yeah. if you're wondering. I recommend it. And, and I thought we'd have a studio audience this week. Um, I think these guys <laughs> over there are just playing the call. I think so. I think, they're calling, for autographs, so. I think they're calling people and saying, you know, hey, can we come <laughs> there's a couple guys cleaning the window behind you. They keep waving. It's not television, but they see they see there's a camera. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to jump into a question, then we'll jump into the rubber situation. Uh, the first one, <laughs> and this is a great question. Uh, here it is. My baby barfed milk on the oh. seat. How do I get the smell out? You and as it. soon as I saw that question, I said, Glenn will have an answer. Yeah, there's two... I, I like the technical term as well. It's not vomit. It's, it's not barfed. spit up. Yeah. They just barfed. Yeah. I mean, that's, oh, that's projectile and everything, has not it? I mean, there's two two substances that. Well, let's say these, there's three. There's three. One of them is diesel. That that never comes out. The smell of diesel never comes out. <laughs> um, so if you've got a diesel car and you take it to the workshop and they don't put a uh, plastic seat over the cover when they you're take done. it in, you're done. So just turn around and take your car somewhere else. Don't okay. else. Um, yeah. Diesel's the first one, but yeah, when it comes to non Vehicle related, um, cats, 
they leave the nasty smell, which is hard to get, almost impossible to get rid of. Okay. But sick, baby yeah. sick, especially if it's a milk-fed yeah. baby, if they're still on just milk. Um, and it's it's a problem, you know. You've, you've got to, basically, the seat's going to have to come out. And as much as you do to the material, it's gone through and it's on the foam. Yeah. Um, and you know you put mattress protectors on your beds for your young children and elderly relatives as well but you know that's to stop it getting through to the mattress you know you can clean the sheets and it's likewise for the seat you can clean the, the cover on the top but the foam once it's in the foam that's you're not going to get rid of that smell if it's in the foam you're done for yeah. so pretty much replace the seat maybe or well yeah there are guys out there that would you know they rebolster it basically the, the foam part we call them bolsters on the sides and up the back and stuff so you could get them replaced. It's not cheap. There's a lot of uh, used car parts around in, in places like Sharjah and um, and further afield, Sajjah. Uh, so you might be able to find a car that's maybe been in an accident that's got a, a seat that's perfectly usable. You can maybe just take that. Okay. So, but generally speaking, no matter how much Clorox uh, washing liquid yeah. I put on it, I am not really going to see yeah. a huge difference. I mean, there's a, there's a great crew out in now uh, behind uh, Times Square Centre called Sara Autocare okay. yep. and they do fantastic work with their detailing okay. um, but I think even they'd be hard pushed to give you any guarantee that you won't get the smell again in a few months and if if you manage to have a child who somehow managed to get sick between the window oh. of your car you're also done for oh, right? well I mean the only good thing there is at least it's metal and plastic so you can yeah. clean that but it is yeah. going to have to have the door stripped down right Right. So, so not good. So uh, my my suggestion, obviously, having been in this boat many years ago, is if you don't have kids. Oh. Oh, okay, sorry. I a jumped in at the wrong use place. rental cars. <laughs> good idea. Yeah. B yeah. use the relative's car. Nice. Or C make sure that if they're in a child seat, that it has enough of an angle so that if they do projectile, the projectile is going to arc onto the child seat so that it takes the the brunt of the pain instead of your vehicle i think splash screens like splash uh, screens. That's csi a yeah like CNR, well, that's CSI, a good idea. Just wrap the kid up in it yeah. plus <laughs> plus it stops the uh the sun glare right as well yeah. for us in the middle east it's a protective yeah. it's a protective so device works everywhere uh, yeah okay so okay well that's a good question so yeah the, wh- whoever sent that through to us appreciate you it. you're up to date yep. you are listening to the car clinic with glenn power and james pike away recorded at the rove hotel in healthcare city dubai uh, windscreen wipers. Mm-hmm. Now, when I thought, you know, we should we should really talk about these. And partly, partially just comes because about every six months I end up getting a new set. Now, truth be told, I am not spending hundreds of durhams no. on a single wiper. Although you could. I could. Yeah. But given the fact that I know my vehicle is going to sit in the sun and that screen is just going to boil the rubber, I tend to go for the most economical yeah. windscreen, windscreen wipers with the idea being that I'll just re- end up replacing them anyway. So, I, But I thought I'd do a little little, little research, and I didn't realize the science oh. in windscreen wipers. You know, just right down to what type I'm using, whether it be the traditional, which is what I typically have. It looks like a, uh, you know, you've got a couple spring-loaded sections on it. But I, and then you've got beam windshield, windscreen wipers, which I didn't realize that there was this big difference. Well, there's so many different types. So there's, it all started maybe 15, 20 years ago when they started doing like the aerodynamic type. Well, that's the other side. Then you got the, the wind spoilers on yeah. them as well. So then that was designed to sort of, as you were driving, it held the rubber onto the screen to give you a better performance because the spring-loaded ones will fail sometimes, especially in colder climates like ours yeah. in the UK. Um and certainly for you in Canada, the there's no issue of them getting hot. They don't get yeah. heat, yeah. Uh, tired from the heat, heat fatigue or anything like that. So what will happen is the spring in the uh, the old type one will fail. So then you don't get the equal pressure and it start to jump. Ah, uh, okay. Else. Well, you know, and you know what they do back in Canada is they'll have a plastic cover over the spring it, yeah. so that the snow doesn't That's get into right. it in the slush. Yeah. But, so, but, I mean, that, that, that fails before the rubber. So then they'd come out with the aerodynamic ones and, like you said, the spoilers to try and force it onto the screen as you're going. But ultimately, the part that touches the glass is the same. Yeah, okay. Ultimately, that that's the same, and, and it's to do the same job. It's just applied slightly differently. Yeah. Um, but there, uh, w- one of my previous employers, actually, there was a guy there. Um, it was from Pakistan, and he'd worked in the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan. Okay. And uh, we are just chatting. It sounded like a really interesting story to, to listen to. So I started talking to him, and I got his whole life story. And he'd actually worked in a uh, wiper blade assembly plant 
really? for one of the brands that is sold here in Pakistan. Uh-huh. Um, and he had pictures and he showed me stuff. And, and uh, you know, like on uh, action movies where Bruce Willis will get a handgun and like take it apart with one yeah. one hand in like three seconds yeah. and he just drops all the bits on the floor. That's it. He pretty much did that with a wiper blade. Really? Right? Yeah, he went and got a Bosch wiper blade out, which wasn't the brand who he worked for, but a wiper blade's a wiper blade pretty much, and just took it all apart. And it was that was that basically what he said? He said, a wiper blade's a wiper blade. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. He said they're assembled. Uh, there's only so much you can do. Now, having said that, um, being the the geek that I am when it comes to stuff yeah. like this, I keep as up to date as I can with things. And Mercedes did an amazing promo video for a wiper. For a, actually, for the wash wipe system, and I, th- I think that was, a, and they used a bullet. They didn't. They didn't use the traditional wiping style. They used the uh, the beam style. That's right. So did, I mean, have you seen the video on YouTube? Yeah. It's amazing, right? So it's like um, they've got little minute jets all the way along the arm, so that it's equal water, and it's it's sprayed onto the blade, so it cleans the blade before the blade then cleans the screen. It doesn't cover the screen with water, so you can yeah. still see where you're going. Um, to be fair, Jaguar doing that about 25 years ago. Yeah, I think they just borrowed the idea. So like, oh, no one's ever going to care about this. Well, and then- Jaguar did it. They didn't have uh, they didn't have uh, a glitzy German production behind them, and it, no YouTube to put it out there. They had just some some guys in Birmingham, and yeah. that was it. And it wasn't quite as uh, let's say glamorous. But um, no, wiper technology is a big thing because yeah, we don't get much rain here, but you know when it rains and your wipers don't clear, oh man, you've got a problem because yeah. then. Five minutes later, when the rain stops, all that dust that's in that rain that you haven't exactly. cleared just sticks to the screen, and that is shocking. You really can't see anything. The sun comes out. It's reflecting off the road. Uh, it's, it's a nightmare. Well, which brought me up to this whole other side of windscreen. Ru- windscreen? windscreen? Is that really what? Is that, uh, <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> what am I, Donald Duck? No, that's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, you are listening to The Car Clinic with Glenn Power and James Pikeaway, recorded at the Rove Hotel in Healthcare City, Dubai. Uh, Wally <laughs> Wabbit. <laughs> it's the Looney Tunes Elmer character. Fun, that's right. Uh, Wally Wabbit. <laughs> well, you go on, Wabbit. <laughs> so this is what we were talking about at the start. <laughs> so you have the traditional windscreen wipers. Yep. You have beam wipers. And then where the rubber connection is, is I didn't realize that there's all sorts of different hybrid rubber compounds okay yeah. and to me that suddenly opened up the entire conversation because yeah the designs don't really change but these rubber compounds because i kept wondering why am i spending a hundred dirhams on a blade when i can go up the street and get a knockoff blade for yeah. 10 dirhams it's sometimes like it's a bit easier to you don't get markings on wiper blades but on tires you will so on tires you'll get like a traction a tread yeah. wear and a temperature so they'll be graded a b or c um and basically, that just it tells you what kind of rubber it's made out of, pretty much, because it tells you how good traction, it, how much traction it has, uh, how quickly the tread will wear, and, and what it's like resisting temperature. And that is all down to the the kind of rubber and the structure of the rubber. And it's the same for the wiper blade. Yeah. Typically, it'll be a softer, more supple uh, rubber that's more expensive. And but what comes with that is it tends to be slightly less durable if used all the time. Right. So. There's a happy medium that you have to to draw. Um, so yeah, for for us, I mean, you see, you know, here people park their car in the sun, they'll lift the blade off the screen, yeah, to try and stop it sort of getting. Because do you think that does anything? It probably stops a little bit of the temperature. It's obviously open to the air, cooling it down a little bit more. The glass, well, yeah. you can't touch the windscreen on your car. Because I often, I often wondered right. if I should be doing that. You it know? might be worth doing it, but. Yeah, exactly. You, know. you, you just shrugged, and I kind of go, should I do that? And it's like, nah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you'll forget. You'll do it maybe once, then forget, and then yeah. what's the Well, I, and I wondered, okay, sure, that's going to be okay for my blade for a bit. I guess if I did it all the time and I was mm. consistent, maybe they'd last an extra month. Yeah, yeah. But Realistically, what are you getting out of that? That, that little piece that's making contact ultimately is, is still going to be getting warm. And yeah. And who knows? But yeah, so the, as soon as we start talking synthetics, I realized... Ah, so if I get a nice synthetic blend, maybe that's actually manufactured for this weather climate. Yeah. That would be really cool. And I, and so then I started looking around and saying, well, is anyone... And I, I didn't find those wiper blades. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're out there, but I didn't find that person who's in the Emirates or in this, this neck of the woods yeah. who's making something no. for Saudi Arabia, Oman, Dubai. And I and I and for, the first thing I thought about was, okay... We know we can get the assemblies for for next to nothing because they're made by everybody. Yep. But that little blade part, that little rubber part, that's gold. 
And if I was making one that's going to last, I mean, I put myself out of business, one that's going to last a couple years. Yeah. I, that would be such an amazing thing that's going to do that. It's going to have that nice, you know, streak across the windscreen. Yep. It's going to pull everything off and it's not well, going to buckle. One tip we could give out for wiper blades. And again, it's not great for me because I'm trying to You're sell, trying to sell wiper blades when yeah. they need them. But um, one thing that I can say is um, if you keep them clean, so the best way to clean them, to keep them grease free and without damaging them with soap and chemicals, because again, this, the windscreen wash, screen wash is designed to protect rubber. So the rubber around the screen yeah, and okay. the rubber of the wiper blade, people that put gen- genuinely anything in there, could be damaging the rubber, it'll shrink and become hard and brittle. I mean, a lot of times it's just people putting water. Yeah, so so you. But you don't want to be putting your Windex. Nah, Clorox. Defi- exactly. Yeah, definitely. A little bit use, of bleach. Definitely not bleach. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not bleach. <laughs> I saw someone doing that, oh, and it's God. not me. No. It wasn't me. It was a bleach ball, and I'm just going, uh, really? What are you doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, but no, definitely um, use screen wash um you know use use a, a genuinely uh something that's designed for that but also when you get the wiper blade off the screen when you're washing the car if you wipe it with an apple so if you cut an apple open and an use apple. an apple to yeah. wipe it that degreases it without harming it but at the same time once you've done that and you've dried it just smear a tiny little bit of baby oil on the rubber just to keep it soft ah. and it'll keep it softer and it'll last a little bit longer okay um Obviously, uh, there's a few little things you can do there. But again, we're not talking, you're not going to get 25 years out of a wiper blade. So, I mean, typically, what what do you get off your blades? Uh, well, I, I, look, I do like to fit a decent wiper blade. Yeah. And do, do, you, do you think, I mean, my whole whole thought is a wiper blade is a wiper blade is a wiper blade these days. Whether I spend 50 dirhams or whether I spend 10 dirhams, I'm really getting the same product. Do, do you buy into that? No. No. Always, <laughs> no. Um as we've just said, the construction of it and the idea behind it is pretty much the same wherever you buy, whatever yeah. your price point is. But what it comes down to is the quality and type of rubber that you've got. Right. Um, quality, as I said, sometimes if it's softer, it'll work much better at its peak, but it might not have the same kind of durability. And right. it, it's all down to what you need. And at the end of the day, um, you know, it, it's a personal choice. I like to fit a decent one, but that that... that that probably just comes down to the fact that I started out in a dealership. Yeah. Well, and then that's the other side. My, my brother, you know, started his career at GM. Yeah. And it's kind of been ingrained to in me. Like, and I, when I owned my VWs, I always yeah, yeah. used to go to the dealer, even yeah. though I was fitting my own stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do my buy own, them from the park, I'd do guys. my own oil change, yeah. but I'd go get all the stuff from them. Yeah, yeah. I'd go buy the filter from them. Yeah. And, and it was kind of like, you know, get the genuine parts in there. You want to make sure you got the genuine stuff, genuine windshield wipers, yeah. just because they're made for that vehicle. Peace of mind sometimes, right? That's true. And it, it is one of those things where, you know, I've got no issue saying now that if it's a, you know, if you've got a Golf and you've got a, you buy a wiper lid that's from Volkswagen or you buy one from Bosch, as long as it clears the screen and it's not damaging the rest of the car, which is very hard to see why it would, you know, if, yeah. it's, if it's the right size and everything else fits properly, it's not going to come off and fly off, and which is a real dangerous thing. Um, and if it saves you money, why not do that? I've got no issue with somebody wanting to save money. Um, but at the same time, I'm just, I think I've just brought up that way because that's yeah. where I did my training and that's just what I knew, All right. you know. You are listening to The Car Clinic with Glenn Power and James Pikeaway, recorded at the Rove Hotel in Healthcare City, Dubai. Speaking of uh, road hazards, and you don't want the windshield wipers falling off, driving down Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road two days ago, going past uh, a building on the, you know that's being put up, probably about 25 stories already. Yep. And we're driving, and I notice a piece of blue insulation oh. foam <laughs> has, has is blown off, and it's... So we're driving far enough away that you can see this thing has, you know, the wind's caught it and it's, it's gone. It's airborne heading towards the highway. Oh. And, uh, you know, it was that one moment where we're looking and I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm driving and I'm doing the limit because I'm doing yep. like 100 kilometers an hour. I think you could do 110. Yep. So I'm doing 100 kilometers an hour and I'm watching this thing descend to earth. And all I'm thinking is, is it going to hit that car in front of me? Is it going to hit me? And trying to think, I mean, I'm planning the defensive move yep. ahead. Fortunately, it landed in the, the fast lane when no car was there and then was sort of over to the side. But what a frightening thing because there's nothing you can do. No. Like no. nothing. You have no control. No, nothing you can do. I mean, even if you just, you know, you, you slow down, you're going to cause problems for yeah. people behind. And yeah. it was it was that terrifying moment going, wow, if this hits someone's windscreen, A, it could damage it. Oh, yeah. But 
if it hits a car, the person swerving. So then I was just thinking, if it hits, if it comes down in front of a car, and that person just you know does defensive, some defensive move, we're gonna have a big pile oh, yeah. up right here. Yeah. It was a terrifying no, moment. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, I, I, um, I always used to do the uh, counting of the blown out tires on the road. Oh, when I, used to I do still do that. Um, but what I've moved on to oh, now, moved on to something else. Yeah. So. The big sort of because I'm I'm, I'm out in Russell Cayman right, so yeah. there's a load of quarry lorries, so they've all got stone and sand in the back. You say that five times fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I've started counting how many have got um, loose or worn wheel bearings, oh. and it's frightening. Yeah, it's absolutely frightening. Um, I thought there was inspections for that. Well, you see, I, I might be shooting myself in the foot if anyone else hears this. But I know the RTA was. I see the RTA inspecting the trucks. At the Dubai Abu Dhabi border. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. I, and so I, and you used to live out in that yeah, neck of the woods, right, so yeah. you would have seen them as well. Yeah. So I see it there, up to the Maktoum Airport. Yep. But I don't know if I see it on the Sharjah Dubai side. No. Um, when I come, come in now to Dubai from Raqqa, I'll go six eleven, and they've put a new offshoot of the road that goes through what what the signpost says is a toll gate. Right. Whether they're doing inspections there or not, I don't know, but. Um, no, it, it's absolutely frightening, and, and I've spoken to the to the boss um, whether there's anything that we can do as kind of a corporate social responsibility project with with Sandance, where where we can offer the police and the RTA some of our some of our guys and some of our time, yeah, just to literally do random stops because I I I will count one out of three will have a wobbly wheel, and don't forget I can only see one side of the truck, yeah. I'm not undertaking it on the hard shoulder and going on the dunes to see the other side. So, you know, it might even be more than one in three, but one in three with a wheel bearing or something. Loose. And there's trucks. Obviously, these, these trucks, these drivers, they're pretty much they're freelance. Right. So they're, they're trying to get as much trying to get out of as that much out of it as they can. can. And I totally understand it. But there's a truck broken down just before where the, uh, the roadworks were now at the big uh, mosque on the 611 that yep. was there for almost a month. Wow. With the wheel falling off where the bearing had obviously okay. seized. And it's like such a false economy because he hasn't been able to earn money for a whole yeah. month while his truck's been sat at the side of the road. Um, and if he'd have got his wheel bearing fixed, which I'm sure he must have been told about. I mean, he must have. Well, and so if whether you're in a car or a truck, yeah, I'm driving and I've got a wheel bearing that's gone... It's gonna, there's going to be a vibration, isn't there? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing with the trucks, obviously, they're so well, then, hard and yeah. they're so heavily loaded. He's probably yeah. not feeling it in the cab, <laughs> or he just doesn't care. But because it's always been doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but in a car, if my wheel bearing's going, oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna hear something and you're gonna yeah, feel yeah. that. Unless you you know, unless you're uh, you've got your Bose turned right up, you've got the Bose sound yeah, system yeah, and it's yeah. turned right up, you're definitely going to hear it for, for sure. You like, like Bose? The, you're, you're a Bose guy. Uh, again, Audi. Yeah, used to have okay. the bows in there, yeah, yeah. so you get used to it. I mean, the thing see, is, well, see, but when the the vintages that I owned, they were all the Blaupunks. Do- Blaupunk, yeah, Blaupunk yeah. audio. Yeah, I, we oh, used right. to still fit the uh, aftermarket sort of after sales Blaupunk stereos if they were requested by the customers on the brand new cars. The Neat. BW, yeah. yeah. So um, some of the early ones didn't even have them in; just had the hole in the dash. <laughs> yeah. <it's> so <laughs> well, it's in case you wanted to put an eight track. Everything was an extra, right? Yeah. Seat belt. Tires, everything. Just bought the shell. Um, yeah. So no, the, the, the um, what were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about bearings. More com- that's right. Yeah. So <laughs> the thing is with the wheel bearing. That's right. There we go. There we go. This is the sign yeah. of an awesome podcast. Yeah, you're gonna have another sip of coffee. <laughs> Just another sip of coffee. <laughs> you know you're doing a great podcast, and this us- it's usually me who that happens to <sighs> talking away. And it's like, what were we talking about? <laughs> Thing is, my wife's sick as well, and I can feel I'm coming down with it. Oh no! We can't be both sick, so I'm gonna have to power through. And it's, this is man flu, I can tell. Yeah. It's gonna be a real. It's gonna be like two weeks, <laughs> maybe months, a month, maybe months. Yeah, it's gonna be like <laughs> New Year. <laughs> uh, I might be out till Game of Thrones starts again. Um, you know, that's one show never got into. It's too late to do it now. Don't do. I know. It. Don't do what thing. my in-laws did. My in-laws got into it like season six. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Well, I said to my boys, do you think I could, like, power? my boys said, you know what, wait till it's done, and then back. just start. Oh, it'll be incredible on Netflix. So, on the binge, that'll be incredible. Yeah, so I, and, yeah. and I just sort of said, you know what, I'm well too, I'm just too far in. I just, there's we, no point. We started, uh, when, you remember The Walking Dead, right? I remember. I still, still remember. I still watch still that going, Walking Dead. Yeah. So, in fact, the current episode well, that's happened right now, I'm not going to spoil yeah, it. No spoilers. But the current one, and I think it's mid-season uh, break right, for them. yeah. Is easily the best episode of Walking Dead I have ever seen. Nice. It's it's the best one. 
I nice. and I mean I've watched a lot of Walking Dead. Yeah. I, I mean I watch it as it comes out. Well, and the best one. It's the best. When it's that fantastic. first started, was it like 2008, yeah. seven or something? something like I was kind of. I think we're eight episodes in. So yeah, I was in. Uh, I was into. I think it was Boardwalk Empire, and I think Game of Thrones had maybe just started. <laughs> and I was too invested. I was like, I can't learn any more characters. I can't <laughs> deal with it. But my friends back in the UK, I was still in the UK at the time. They started watching it, so they kept watching it and watching it. And then me and Amy have decided we're going to watch it on uh, Netflix. So we're into the second series now, loving it. So yeah. Yeah, back to wheel bearings. Yeah, so wheel bearings. You know, this yeah. is, is something that how do, how do we ta- how do we know if the bearings are going? Vi- is there a visual check? Anything I the can do? Visual, physical, uh, again, audible. Uh, the thing is with the wheel bearing is it might happen um, it invariably will unless there's an accident or something that catastrophic catastrophically fails. It will happen gradually if it's a wear thing. So you might be in the car and you'll start very very gradual that you wouldn't necessarily hear it, and then by the time it's to the point where it's almost falling off you might have just become accustomed to it. Especially right. if you're doing sort of, um, like some of my neighbours, Russell came into Abu Dhabi every day. Yeah. You know, you're just going to become so accustomed to that noise that it's not till someone else gets in the car and you're like, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or or someone else drives your car. My boys came home and, and got in into my vehicle and we're driving and they're going, Dad, what's going on with your yeah. brakes? Yeah. I'm going, what do you mean what's going on with the brakes? It's like I basically had my foot through the floorboards <laughs> trying to yeah, stop. I was doing a Fred Flintstone yeah, here. Just gradually like, deteriorating. Uh, You've got used to it. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's happening with wheel bearings normally. Um, so it's always a difficult one calling a customer and saying you've got a, an issue with your wheel bearing. Oh, I didn't notice anything. So, yeah. um, But then when you fix it, it's great because like, my car's so quiet. Yeah. You know, they turn the radio down to six instead of sixteen. <laughs> it's great. So, um, well, yeah. but that could also be tires, and that's where I wanted to tires, head to. Yeah. When it's it's only what you are listening to the car clinic with Glenn Power and James Pikeaway, recorded at the Rove Hotel in Healthcare City, Dubai. Twenty minutes into our conversation, <laughs> and we're 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 working our way through the rubber. Yeah, and Sandance Tires is where you are now, yeah. but they don't just do tires. No, I mean they. Of course, that's the bread and butter. That's yeah. where they started. But yeah, they yeah. they do all sorts of repairs. They do everything, bumper well, yeah. to bumper. We've got um started out like that. We've got our own brand of tire, uh, manufactured Sa- for us. Sandance. Yeah, called Pearly. Um, Pearly. So it's an Italian design, um, Italian material, but it's yeah. uh, got something that go manufa- nice on my Wrangler. Manufactured in yeah yeah. Mm. Manufactured in China, you get a set of tires on yours for a thousand dirhams, including the VAT. That's pretty nice. Years and warranty, right in my price range. Yeah, one year's <laughs> warranty. So, <laughs> and and as someone, you know, someone might say, "Oh, China." Say, Are you kidding? I'm a big fan of Chinese tires. Yeah. So, uh, value is so what I'm looking at. Something you <laughs> mentioned to me last week, right? Um, a friend, You're smiling, <laughs> friend, friend of ours, into Sean, uh, Mr. Tire, Mr. Tire. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned that to me. So I'm. Yeah, talking some people are obsessed with food. Yeah, <laughs> some people are obsessed with TV. This man. I think he changes his tires every month. If you like him, you like him. What can you that's do? what he does. He just yeah. uh, I got new I got new tires. I go what? <laughs> I haven't changed my tires in two years. He goes oh man that's weird. you know I got I but the tires I got on my vehicle now when they were brand new a month later he's got the light on. I think you're getting some cracks in these. I'm going <laughs> they're a month old man. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no cracks in those yeah. tires. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny because you mentioned it last week and then this morning my friend um, who used to work with me in the UK who came out after me. Um, he works uh, at Alpha Team. Uh-huh. And, uh, Selling tires? They'd had into Shannon doing the tires for his Ram. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he was just oh, talking there you about go. those today. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what uh, did he say about those tires? He said they're a cool tire. Pretty much a new product for him. But, um, but uh, he said he'd never fork out <laughs> for those tires. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I would think Imtishan. So, so you know, not that we're outing Imtishan or anything, but no. he's not married. He has no kids. He lives at home. Yeah. Him and his dad. And... That vehicle of his, the Ram that you're going to see, which is just beautiful. If yeah. you see this tricked out Ram, it's it's red. It's a it's check a him out on Instagram. He's always yeah, Instagram. posting up there. Yeah. 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 Between that and the the DeLorean, yeah. But oh, yeah. those tires are are giant. Yeah, they're, they're probably they're probably fifteen hundred dirhams each. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> they're more so. than I want to yeah. spend for four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this is the problem. It's there's there's this delicate balance between. Am I getting what? What's my tread wear rating on the tire? Exactly. What's the traction rating on the tire? What's the temperature rating That's on the, the tire? Big one here, yeah. Where is the tire coming from? Yeah. And in putting that all together, because look, I I, I want to have I, you know I probably want to have a when you look at tires, they come with this they they do come with tread wear rating and one hundred being the base. Yeah. And maybe you want two hundred. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get double, but two hundred, three hundred, yep. anything above a hundred is giving you better tread wear, so yep. they're going to last longer. And then. 
when I was looking at traction grades, I mean, it's this is this makes you know double A, double a, a, a B, B C. Yeah. I'm going, what the heck? Yeah. You know, you know, and C of course, unacceptable for road yeah. travel. Yeah. I'm going, oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and when it, it so it becomes interesting, and then you get the temperature rating A, B, and C. Yeah, and I I wonder. A lot of places are selling tires, and I'm wondering how many people are going in with the little chart in their hand to say, okay, hold on, you're selling me this tire. A, what's the date that it was made? Because I'm going to get dinged by yeah. the RTA. Yeah. But B, what's the temperature rating on these things? Temperature's because, a big one here. Yeah. yeah. Do you think people pay enough attention? Typically, uh, historically, no, but we're yeah. very lucky in that um, you know, the RTA and the, and the government in general, actually, they do a great job in protecting people and not allowing one tires that aren't suitable through right which is we, pretty good you know they do a great job but as with anywhere in the world there are always people and organizations that that perhaps get things through or they've got old stock lying around that was before they were really cracked down on and and, and they're they, they do get out there from time to time um we even get the you know when you've gone by a, a fridge or whatever yeah. You get the big uh, sticker on the side, A, B, C, D, which tells you the the uh, sort of the gr- how green, oh, right, yeah, how green yeah. it is, how friend- eco friendly it is. Yeah. Do they uh, come on the fridge? Get those, on, get those on bought, tires. I haven't now. bought a fridge in like fifteen years. So. Well, yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna get a carport. I'm gonna check that's that. A G, out. Then that one. <laughs> <laughs> Turn, change the fridge turns on and the whole street lights <laughs> dim. Uh, the the light burnt out on my uh, fridge, so I thought I'll go get a light. Yeah, we don't sell those lights anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so <Like> now, tube. <laughs> <laughs> God. yeah, it's exactly. It's like yeah. really, yeah. It's not the fridge isn't that old. The guy go, it goes, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, but you even get those that on tires now as well. Okay. So um, they're very, but yeah, temperature's the big one. Um, we don't see many tires that that aren't a rated now. Yeah. It's very difficult to find one, and I don't know why you'd want to. But if you're unlucky and you've got one, I mean, the B's kind of acceptable, but. It's not always going to be an A here, and if it isn't, you want to ask the question, and you want to get one that is an yeah. A. Well, let's just say anything below C is considered unacceptable. Well, so. definitely, yeah. But so I, if, you're getting, if you're getting A tires, I a, don't know. A or B. I've, I've seen like some Bs. So I've seen yeah, some Bs. Yeah, yeah, you get them, but I, and, and B's fine, but I wouldn't but go really, less than a B. Yeah, but really, you probably shouldn't have a B. And in fact, I no. think maybe my my tires might be a B. There's I'm no reason. Sure. i got to yeah, go check it. No, there's no reason to get them. They're, they're all, all brands do them. You know, I, double A. For yeah. the uh, with an A rating for temperature and then three hundred plus for the trend yeah. three twenty three sixty. And I so. think it's it's on the tire, so take a look at all that all that stuff. Is Ask the guys that fit them to talk you through all the markings on the tire. You'll yeah. be amazed at how much is on there. There's yeah. so many things on there. And you want to know that? I had an interesting one with my tires the other day. Was that I was at Motor City, okay. and I was doing the cut through between Studio City and Motor City. Yeah. There's a couple schools there, and when you do that little cut through, there's a portion of interlocking brick before the pavement. Yeah. And as I went onto that interlocking brick Slipped and then yeah, and bit. transitioned yeah. onto the pavement, I, I had quite a little drift. Yeah, yeah. And I went, whoa, yeah. this is... Those interlocks get really slick. Yeah. And really I was slick. I was really surprised. Yeah. And that's not the first time that's happened. In that, only in that, at that place. Yeah. And it's happened in multiple vehicles. And I'm going, okay, you know, I've even got the, the, the traction control on, but I, I didn't realize how, you know, a little bit of sand on them. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's happening. Very slick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah. And I thought, okay, if this happened for me... What's happening to some of these guys on motorcycles or, you know, what's happening in the morning when people are in a little bit of a rush? There must be accidents yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, with the, with the big wide tires, you know, some of the BMWs, Mercedes with the rear yeah. wheel drive, you know, big wide tires on the back. They just plane across that easily, yeah. 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 It, obviously, if we're looking at, at tires, I, I want to actually, we're going back to the, the brand that Sandance is making. Mm. So how does that work? They, they've got them custom made and... Uh, they have a variety of, of traction and tread wear. So fit, yeah, all designs from all sizes, all the way through commercial tires, everything off-road, track. Ah. They, they, they'll do everything. Um, you'll find it all on the website. Uh, but Pearl is the name. They're, they're, the price is low at the minute. It's a launch. It's, okay. it's a relatively new thing. So, But we'll give a year's warranty. We've got a, a special offer on four tires for each size. Depend doesn't matter on... We just base it on rim size, uh-huh. so that's not the most important one, but it gives us a rough idea of what the tires are going to be. And uh, yeah, we've had great, great results with them. I mean, I've got four on the Touareg. Russell um, uh-huh. came in most days to Dubai, no issues with it. Nice. Um, so yeah, doing good stuff. But th- we sell all tires, and, and there are some. Don't get me wrong, there are some tires where we had an RS7 in a couple of days ago. 
Yeah. Um, fantastic car. I mean, you just, I, I, I kept switching the engine off just so I could hear it start <laughs> up. And it, n- not, not outside, you hear yeah, nothing yeah, outside, yeah. just sat in the driver's seat because you can't really hear it outside. But it, the rumble from the exhaust and the engine, yeah. it was great. Just switching it on and off. And, and that's the thing, you know, it, and it's, so we're talking about some value and not to diss China because, again, I buy products from there and they, they were bringing out some products. Yeah. And just because of the market sense, they're, they're able to bring them in at a pretty good price point. The yeah. Koreans are making tires, yeah. but they, there can be dip, some of the higher end tires, some of the Prellies and stuff. And and some of the the, the, the you know the Michelins yeah. and other things that are coming from home country, from Europe and and from North America and and from Japan, yeah. they they can. They, I don't under I don't get why some of those can be so good. Like just the manufacturing process. Tires yeah. are tires. Look, I mean, look what happens is especially so so the RS seven. Um, if you look at a typical tire size, most people will know for a tire. Let's say the size, and it'll be two four five. 60 50 right so it'll be 245 slash 60 or 15 that'll be let's say what's, what's that mean so 245 is the width of the tire in millimeters it gets confusing with tires it's like the british and uh, uh americans kind of butting heads on the metric and the yeah. imperial system so you get 245 that would be the width in millimeters of the tire so that's the width of the tire how does that work in the uk to do, be? don't they aren't they imperial measures no and no no so then you get slash and then it, let's say 60. 60 is 60% of the width. So 60% of 245 millimeters is the height of the tire. So from the edge of the wheel rim to the top of the tread. Okay. So that's your percentage. That's called the aspect ratio. And then the last number, 16, 17, 15, is the diameter of the tire, well, of the rim, so the inside bead of the tire in inches. So we've got millimeters and inches all over here. So it's a real mess. But that's pretty much what it is. Um, now... At the end of that, you'll get numbers, you'll get letters. That refers to the speed that the tyre is rated to and the load that it's rated to. Um, not really an issue for most people unless you're talking performance stuff that you know you're going to be pushing over 150 mm. uh, miles per hour or something crazy like that. Or if you're towing and you need to have, make sure it's the right load capacity. Yeah. Um, so that's the end. So you'll get something like 97W. Um, which is a typical one. Uh, then after that, you might have XL, which is extra load, so it's an extra strong sidewall. Ah, okay. You might have RFT, um, which means run flat. So some of the cars with no spares, typically BMWs. Uh, is that becoming? That's becoming pretty common. The run flat tires. It was, and then it's died off again, thankfully. Oh, yeah? And then it's coming, <laughs> thankfully. still still hangs around. Um, well, some of these smaller cars where you just don't have a, yeah. a place to put a full size yeah. spare in that. Yeah. They just—they don't. Uh, the one flat tire cars—they don't even have a spare. The problem is that what happens is you know people before they'll get a puncture, the light might come on. If they've got to run flat, they should have TPMS, so tire pressure system monitoring yeah. system. So they'll they'll get the warning light, they'll check the pressures on it. If they check the pressures on it, they'll see one of the tires is flat. The problem is with a run flat, if they don't do that straight away, the sidewall's so hard, it's so solid, it's steel basically. It's like a steel disc almost. It cuts through. So then you end up with just running on the sidewall and the tread's just loose flopping around inside and it's it's just one of those situations where you kind of don't have a problem driving it really, especially if you're sitting in traffic and just going to the office and back or to the school yeah. and back. And then before you know it, you go for a service and you've got a real dangerous situation on your hands. Uh, talk about another dangerous situation. i got a neighbor who has been driving on their spare, which is one of those three-quarter size things, for a month. Like they're they're still every time I turn around the car has come and gone back. Yeah. It's still got that thing on it. Yeah, a big yellow sticker on it that says no more than eighty kilometers an hour. And yeah, it should actually I think it does say somewhere no more than fifty kilometers driven either. And it's a month. Yeah, they've done more than fifty kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, it's you. The uh, the tires will be specifically designed by manufacturers for their cars unless you're talking about a mass-produced car that's a simple a to b car that, that that's not something like an rs7 so these rs7 tires we had to have ro rated tires oh so you are listening to the car clinic with glenn power and james pike away recorded at the rove hotel in healthcare city dubai you'll get uh mo n o p o r o a o and it's basically the manufacturer that is their tire that was designed for them for a particular car mm. and you can only use that one so for some especially performance vehicles or special use vehicles there will be a tire that that you should use as per the manufacturer and they'll have designed that tire for the manufacturer so let's say michelin 
will have designed a particular tyre for, let's say, Ford. Right. And they'll say, right, we want a particular tyre that's going to do this. It's going to be good for this. This is the car. This is the weight. This is the speed. This is how it's going to be. Front, rear, four-wheel drive, whatever it may be. Michelin will go to town on it. They'll design it. They'll fit it to the car. And then all Ford workshops will be told this is the only tyre you can fit on that car. Now, if I go to the Ford workshop and buy that tyre, do Mm. I get a discount, do you think? Do I get a deal? (laughs) <laughs> it's probably not going to work like that. I'm not going to say one way or the other. Yeah, um, I'm thinking it's a leading question. I don't yeah. think we do. I think when no. I and and because I, you know, when I needed new tires on the old Wrangler, I thought, well, I'm just going to go back to the dealer. Yeah, they I mean, don't forget, Ford aren't making really aren't making money. Right. I, I guess. mean, the, the agency that, that sells yeah, it are yeah. making a bit of a cut. They're making a yeah. profit on it. But Ford, the manufacturer, have had to pay Michelin to put the tires on their car, really? and that's built into the cost of the car when you buy yeah, it. Okay. Um, but they're not really making money out of it. It's nothing that they, they don't really advertise it. There are some special editions. So Volkswagen used to do a Pirelli edition for the GTI, um, and uh, that stopped for some reason. But they, that was all Pirelli. You know, the seats yeah. used to have tire tread pattern on, right. and the Pirelli special P wheels yeah. and stuff like that. Well, one of the sides you notice with with uh, car companies that have got specific tires is sometimes they've got a specific size. Yeah, and then you try to replace that, and you say, well, I don't want to put on. The BF Goodriches, because maybe they're just noisier on my vehicle. I'm speaking from my own. Yeah. Design, or I don't want to put the Wrangler tire back on because it's too noisy. Yep. And then you say, well, okay, what are my options? And you, you go around to the tire places, and you know they've got a size that's very close, but they don't have that no. exact size because exactly, well, yeah. we don't sell that size. One thing to be, that's a good point, because one thing to make sure when you do change your tires is don't change the tires as per the size of tire that's already on the car. If you haven't owned this car from new, even if you have, maybe. I don't know. Um, I think it's probably better to have a sort of blanket advice on this, but change the tyre to the size that's listed in the owner's handbook right. or on the sticker on the on the door jar at the front or behind the fuel cap. Mm. Because sometimes, they, like you said, a specific size, they don't have it. We've got one, maybe you need a 265, 50, 15. They might say, oh, well, we've got a, a 275, 40, 15. Yeah. It'd be kind of the same rolling radius, but... You know, it's not the right width. It could cause all sorts of issues, start touching the body, things like that. So always change the tyres as per the size the manufacturer recommends, not always the tyres of tyre that's on. That's great advice. Um, You'll probably find a few people have come uh, (laughs) a cropper to that. Because I've got guys in our our workshops that have literally just been around tyres. That is all they've done. And I'll give them a size of a tyre and ask them to get me a price for a customer. And they'll say, oh, yeah, that's for a Yaris. Or they'll say, oh, for a high ace, or they'll say, oh, that's for a Mustang, or that's for a Ford Edge. Really? And it's like, wow. See, those guys. are the guys you want to be around wow, if guys. you need yeah. tires, because yeah. they, they know. They tires. know just from, and that's because there are specific sizes for specific yeah. cars that yeah. don't fit any other car. Um, and it's quite a common thing. You know, the other side of, of buying tires is just knowing how they've been stored, where you're buying them. Yep. Like, are they sitting out, out back in this bacon in the sun, or are they in an air-conditioned environment? Yep. Even though they're going to be on your vehicle out in the elements, you don't want them being stored before you yep. buy them, bacon in the sun. They, they, they're deteriorating. I saw a, uh, a warehouse, not going to mention the name because this is not good, but there's a warehouse in Alcoos that's a huge tire distributor, and I was in there, um, basically price checking, and they had tires stored with one twisted and fitted inside the other one to get to try and save on space no yeah and they're stacking them like 15 high so the bottom one's never going to pop onto the rim it's going to be all sorts of mess yeah wow. and you see the guys that, that transport the old tires yeah they were in better condition than the <laughs> ones that were in the new warehouse so crazy. Now, there was a time and i i know they were cracking down on it can you still buy used tires or is that no, done that's you shouldn't done. you shouldn't be able to like, I'm, I'm sure deepest darkest parts of the world that you can but yeah. you really shouldn't yeah that's good because i i think some of those tires you just don't know they put a little baby oil on them they make them nice and yeah well you used to go to charge and they used to be it was like almost like the uh they were so open about it they used to wrap them in uh, cellophane okay so the ones that were wrapped in cellophane were used so you know they're used so they weren't hiding it yeah they'd wrap them in cellophane they're, yeah they're the uh, used ones and it's like okay but yeah they, they have um, they, they are cracking down on that yeah. which is good definitely yeah, a lot of issues yeah. and tube versus uh, tubeless does anyone still sell tube tires now? I see them for trucks yeah cars commercial stuff not on, not no? on cars not on uh, light vehicles no um, why not it seems to me like that might be a good idea saying that if you want a Euro look so you know if you're modifying the car you want to put big wide wheels on it and stretch and a, quite a narrow tire across it so you get the real low profile look yeah. um, sometimes you have to put a tube in there to, to 
pop it onto the rim. But is, it, but is there a reason we've gotten rid of tubed tires? Like, it's just an unnecessary thing now. Okay. Uh, tires are strong enough, and um, you know, punctures are easily repairable now. So unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. All right. It just seems like you know they track players and things. <laughs> yeah, we've moved on to cassettes <laughs> now. We've, you remember the mini disc? <laughs> We're at mini disc. <laughs> mini disc. <laughs> it's nineteen ninety eight again. We're digging into a cupboard at the university the other day, and there was mini disc players. I'm going really. Yeah, I remember my friend having one at school, and he was like, "Oh, he's so lucky." <laughs> yeah, then for like two minutes, and then we'd moved on. Everyone had moved on. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there we go. Uh, the other thing that you know, we're still still staying in the rubber area, sort mm. of, kind of, back to we were talking about windscreen washer yeah. stuff. And, I, you know, it's, it's amazing because I, I started digging into that a little bit, seeing what's out there and, and why I don't want to put, you know, bleach or yeah. just kitchen soap, diluted kitchen soap in there. And because when you think about it, a lot of the windscreen, windscreen washer fluids that you can buy, they are a little soapy. Yes, but they're designed for the, Yeah, they're yeah. designed though to do the, a specific job. Yeah, I mean, there's um, so most people in the UAE will have, and we're in the UAE, right? So most yeah. people in the UAE will have hard water. Most parts of the UK have hard water as well. So what we used to have in the UK was a problem where people would put soap or washing up liquid in the um, tank. If you're using the water out of the tap you'll get scale in there, lime scale. And then the soap breaks that down, but it doesn't dissolve it. It just mobilizes it, and then yeah, it blocks the jets. There we go. Blocks the pump. Before you know it, you need new jets, new pump, new lines, and it was a real issue. Um, the screen wash that Volkswagen used to use was uh, because of the chemicals in it, nothing majorly harmful, but it was designed to, to, to stop the water going stagnant because you don't want Legionnaire's disease and things like that. Yeah. Um, Basically, and there was also a very small, but there was some alcohol in it. Um, when you used to wash on a Volkswagen car, when you wash the screen, yeah. um, it would automatically set the um, AC or the blower to ah. recirc, so it wouldn't let the fumes into the cabin. And yeah. obviously, very, very, very low risk. And that was just one of those things, you know, Germans like to over-engineer things, yeah. but it was a nice little touch. Same if you put it in reverse, if you had the AC on, put it in reverse it would put it on research so you didn't drive through the fumes and suck the fumes into the cabin. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they are specifically designed screen washers out there which you will need to use to keep the hoses. People forget the hoses are rubber. You need yeah. to keep them Well, um, I, I, I was looking through at some of the different brands that are out there and you know, Prestone makes yeah, it it's quite, a famous one. quite, yeah. quite highly regarded for yeah. the compounds that yeah. it's using and its ability to break down you know, bugs and dust and, and stuff. And I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. And there's, there's just so many, you know, yet I'll go to some of the garages here, not not a garage, but, a, you know, a service station and, and stuff, and they just want to put water in. Yeah, I, I like, mean, look, at a, a, a squeeze, if you've got nothing to put in and you need something, then water's fine. But, uh, yeah, you do want to try and keep on top of the detergent. You can buy the really super concentrated things. So you'll see them sometimes at the yeah. cash register at the um, I never know, petrol but I, station. Yeah. Normally a luminous green or yeah. something like t- two dirhams and it's that's it makes up to 75 liters or something just get just get one of those if you yeah. if you're unsure that it's fine i mean ideally don't mix them because sometimes the compounds aren't matching and you'll end up with like a, a vaseline sort of jelly kind of okay. effect but as long as you put in plenty of water in it it won't be the end of the world and keep going but I, I think that stuff's great to it just works to as you said yeah. to break down the dirt and when stuff. you take the car in for a service they should top it up just ask them well on my invoice there's a charge for screen wash some people will do that we put it in as uh, part of our consumables but some people will charge for it yeah. um if someone asked me to get them the specific volkswagen one i'll charge them for it because obviously i've bought it as an item but if someone's filled that up for you on the service just say look whatever you put in my screen wash can you give me another bottle spare put yeah. it in the back and uh then you've got That's it it's a great idea yeah yeah. You are listening to The Car Clinic with Glenn Power and James Pikeaway, recorded at the Rove Hotel in Healthcare City, Dubai. I tend to go, I go through a lot of that stuff. That's, I mean, I, yeah. I just like to have a qu- clean windshield. You know. yeah. oh, it's bad as <laughs> you're driving, you've wiped the screen, and then after about a couple of minutes, there's a drip that ran down, and you didn't see it, and it's dried, and you yeah. have to do it again. Or it's, it's just if it's been foggy, or if you're yeah. coming through some sandy areas. It's amazing. Yeah. The windscreen just you know gets all that. And yeah. if you're doing some night driving, bugs are out again. And yeah, yeah, oh, bug season yeah, again. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, quick question that's come through, and I got this one on my uh, Twitter feed, actually, asking about a chugging car. It says, my car does the chug when I put on the brakes, and it pulls to the right. 
but I uh, wanted to know what's this telling me. Well, so kind of, you, yeah. you know what you get? You get the sense it probably does that 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 bouncy kind yeah. of thing and yeah. pulling to the right when they put on the brakes. Normally, I mean, it depends where you're feeling that. If you're feeling it through the body of the car, or if you're feeling it through the steering wheel, or both. Um, that will give you an idea of whether okay, it's so if I'm fe- feeling it through the steering wheel what am I talking about typically the front brakes okay so they're warped they're connected or directly to the wheel through the steering one of the so brakes is gone or yeah so normally the disc is warped you can remachine them but be very careful that one they don't cut too far into the disc and two the disc is not below the minimum thickness when it's being done um, yeah, okay. so otherwise you're going to have it done happen again but worse it might crack yeah, that's, that's the last thing that, you want that'd be terrible now uh, if I'm feeling it the other way through the body typically the, the rear but it could still be the front as well okay. um, but it could it's normally the rear that's that's causing that one if you're feeling it through the body normally you'll feel it in the seat yeah right okay I, I've, I've still seen some vehicles that have disc on the back or disc on the front yeah. pads on the back uh, with the brake drums and shoes yeah, yeah. brake drums and shoes yeah, yeah. and Shoes, drums, and shoes are far better than distant pads in terms of how they work as so a one-off why, brake. So why are the why but are they're the harder to cool down? Ah, so they 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 soon suffer from brake fade much more than 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 this. In fact, when Jaguar put discs on their was it the Type Two, like fifty-eight or sixty or something like that, when they put, they won the whatever race it was, maybe it was Le Mans or not, I'm not sure. Yeah. They'd won it for years, year after year after year. They'd never changed the model of the car, but what they did was they put all oh, this great new Fandango brake discs on it. Didn't win anything because they couldn't <laughs> stop the car quick enough. Yeah. Because they were used to the drum brakes. And on a racetrack situation where they weren't doing much braking apart from here and there, they didn't have the built up heat in the disc because they cooled down much quicker to, to, to really get them going. And, and technology's moved on now. Brake discs are great because compounds of brake pads. So we talked about compound of yeah. The rubber. Um, a guy we should probably get on, actually. Peter, who's over here with uh, Borg and Beck, they have designed their own brake for this region. Really? Based on the new compound. Low dust, so it's good for the environment. Fantastic wear rates in the heat, even in the heat. Um, going on the taxis. So. Wow, we should make a plan. We've yeah, we should get, get Peter in. in. Yeah, yeah, he's a really good and guy. just talk about the other stuff they're making because yeah, they yeah. do other stuff too. No, he's a technical there. guy, so he reverse yeah. engineers stuff. You know, if you ring him up and say, "I need this bush," he makes it. Nice. Yeah, it takes it apart and figures out how to make it. Does he yeah. just do stuff around the house too, just for the fun of it? Probably. What, are you thinking about getting him in, sitting him on your desk at home, and just <laughs> asking him questions? <laughs> <laughs> like some kind of wise owl. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm maybe, sure he'd do that. He's maybe, a nice guy. But he must, I mean, don't, what do you think the guy does on his spare time? Like, he's re- if he reverse engineers car parts, don't you think he's probably at home thinking, you know, how can I reverse engineer? Tinker. Yeah, he's always tinkering. Yeah, yeah. I bet he's got like this, I bet he's got the most amazing kitchen gadgets. I'm just thinking his tools. He made himself all his tools, yeah. Like I, my dad worked for IBM for for many many years, and he had the best set of tools. It was like this briefcase, the magic <laughs> briefcase, and you open it up, and it was just full of all sorts of specialized tools for for the mainframe computers that he was working on yeah. in in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, and it was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And so imagine the tools this guy's got. Yeah, and oh, just yeah. the the workaround, the tools that he's made. Yeah, I mean, he's the actual worldwide, he's the go-to guy for that whole company, and it's a huge company. I mean, we're and talking... he's in town. Yeah, yeah, we're talking millions of pounds sterling in stock just in the UK. I tens of millions of pounds. That's a lot of weight on that yeah, guy's yeah. shoulders. He's the guy, and uh, yeah, we'll get him in. Yeah, let's he's do a, that. He's a, he's, a, he's a real interesting guy, just but yeah, he, um, like I say, we talked about the compound of rubber. The compound of brakes is a huge thing. Um, because of that his wife must hate it if he's at home just boiling that stuff up on the stove yep I'm working on this new com- <laughs> what is, yeah, what's going on in here don't worry here's a mask it'll be a week but you'll yeah. be okay yeah. <laughs> go but see your mom <laughs> it, yeah he's it's, it's, it's moved on from the uh, it's not really the kitchen table industry anymore but um, no he's um, like I say they design brake pads they design everything from the ground up and, and brake technology is a big thing because yeah. So we were talking brake chugging. Right? Yeah, we ta- it's normally we a vibration because drums, of the brake. Yeah. If you imagine, it's hard to do um, when we get the YouTube thing up and running. We may get a whiteboard. I'll yeah, start I doing think, that. I think that's what we got to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you imagine the brake, if you're looking at a brake, this sort of uh, side on, so you're looking at the uh, the edge of it, it just appears to you in front like a, a straight line. You're basically sandwiching that brake disc with the pads, brake yeah. pads either side. If that brake disc is wavy, as it rotates, it's like having a buckled wheel on a bicycle. Oh, we okay. talked about the trucks with the yeah. wheel bearings and they're wobbling around. It's yep. basically doing that. So when you're pressing the brake, it's pushing the, the brake pads out as okay. it rotates and you're feeling that in the car. Oh, okay. um, so it could be, because it's pulling right as well, it could be that uh, one side of the brakes is binding 
Ah, uh, okay. That's why it's pulling one way or, or the yeah. other. Like trying to, you know, row a boat with one oar, it's just going to go in a circle, right? Unless you swap sides. Um, or it could be that there's a combination of things. It could be that the binding brakes has caused the overheating, which has caused the uh, brake to warp. Uh, it could be a suspension issue as well. So, so, so as, as always, when I take this into the workshop, you know, for this person, give them all the details that you know. Explain exactly what it don't, is. Don't leave. Yeah. Don't leave and take agree to anything drive. until they've been and seen it and you've shown them. You drive and show them. Yeah. yeah. I had a guy in today, a friend of mine, that uh, sort of lost touch after I left my last place. And... Um, He's like, oh, I've got a rattle in my car. <laughs> so I was like, okay, no problem. So I got in the car with him and he was driving around. I was like, yeah, I hear it. He's like, you hear it? I went, yeah, yeah. He says, oh, I said, I thought I was going mad. He said, my, my girlfriend hears it and I hear it, but I took this other guy out and he's in the other workshop and he's like, no, no, there's nothing there. I can't hear it. And uh, so I took the, the seatbelt out, took all the panels off on the inside, carpet up because I could hear where it was. And um, it was getting louder every time I did it, but it wasn't stopping. So I thought, well, it's not these panels. And I just put my hand on the floor I could feel it in the body, um, underneath the, the 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 floor of the car, and uh, put it up in the air, and the fuel pipes were rattling around. Ah, okay. So the the plastic fuel pipes uh, held in by plastic locks, and they'd broken. It was rattling around. So packed it out with some foam, put some new locks in there. Happy days. Man, so, but yeah. it's it's that sound of that rattle, just especially if you got a car that's very well insulated yeah, yeah. and you hear that just that little yeah, yeah. rattle it's like yeah, yeah. I don't have that problem my cars are old so the rattles are you probably got the roof off right? <laughs> I, I do I'm driving season for the roof off yeah, yeah. and the yellow one yeah the roof's yeah. off on the yellow one so you know yeah so the problem with that is air brakes on trucks <laughs> and <laughs> If you're driving when they and doing discharge. A, and they discharge you, I, I thought I was, I thought I was, you know, I'm gonna have to have second pair of underwear the other yeah. day because I was like, oh, I, th- I thought I was gonna die. I was like the instant adrenaline rush because I thought I was, I was being taken out. Yeah, and it was, it yeah, was right some... beside me. It was, it was frightening. <laughs> it was so loud. Yeah. It's worse when the when you go past one where the the valves have failed and they're just constantly oh, they're discharging sh- 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 yeah. all the time. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. So, but no, yeah. it's nice having the windows open. That means every noise is a noise. Yeah. I think the the one of the things I'm noticing this time of year, starting to notice now, maybe it's because windows are down. Yep. Is there's a lot. I'm going by trucks that have got I, I, either their transmissions are on their way out yep. or they're dro- riding the brakes. But you smell that burning plastic, mm. burning asbestos, something. Yeah. And you're going, what? And, and because I drive old vehicles. People have heard this before. I always think it's my car. I'm going, oh, I hope this, <laughs> yeah. oh, if it's doing that. Yeah. It's, I don't yeah. think you think that's mine. Yeah, there's nothing worse than driving past like a construction <laughs> and then you smell some burning rubber and like, oh, no. no yeah, is it me? Yeah. <laughs> is it and me? I'm, and then I'm always looking at the hood <laughs> and the gauge is going up. Is there smoke coming out? Yeah. What could possibly yeah. be burning with that smell yeah. this car's done no, it's normally brake linings yeah yeah, yeah. or friction <laughs> linings uh, on a clutch or something that's going on one of the trucks yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's uh, yeah um, glenn you know what i think i think we got to wrap things up yep for uh, another week yep. where we got we got a, we got questions already lining up if people want to get questions to us it's really simple tweet them through yep. or send them through on instagram potaholics yep. is our handle uh, podaholics at gmail.com. That's podaholics with a K and an S. Podaholics. Yep. Uh, Gmail is another way to do it. Gmail.com, uh, podaholics at. And as I said, Twitter, Instagram, all podaholics. Uh, fire YouTube. the questions through. Yeah, YouTube. Yep. We're, we're posting it up on YouTube and we're, yep. we're available on iTunes and all of your favorite podcasting channels. So share the love. Let people know we're out there yep. and we'll uh, do it all again really soon. We'll do. Talk to you again. Thanks for listening to The Car Clinic. Want to find out more about the podcast, listen to other episodes or get in touch? Visit our website, Podaholics. That's P-O-D. A-H-O-L-I-K-S dot com. Send us an email at podaholics at gmail dot com or find us on all your social media channels at podaholics. And of course, we can be heard on all your favorite podcast sources. Like what you heard, share with your network and we will be back soon with another episode.